please say something i employ you i employ you if you are listening to this if you have you think this is a bad system speak up and say something and also just don't buy it do not buy anything if you want to buy the battle pass that's whatever bro because at least you're getting value out of this hey you guys your boy daffy uh real quick this is gonna be a uh, longer video we're gonna be going to detail about a lot of different stuff um there's not gonna be as much editing in this video most of it's gonna be talking uh not a lot of gameplay in this video but um if you're interested in overwatch or you're interested in things that we think need improvement all that good stuff i suggest uh you you know stick around please leave a like it really helps me out we're also on our way to 500 subscribers subscribers which is absolutely fantastic uh just thank you guys so much um also if you agree or disagree with anything i say or i you know dj says please let me know as long as you, you know respectful and all that good stuff but other than that man yeah just uh thank you guys so much and hope you enjoyed the video all right, all right. thank you what to do with your boy and large prostate and we're back at it with some more overwatch man yeah so there's probably gonna be little to no gameplay in this video i'm gonna be talking about everything and i mean everything i think is wrong in overwatch too uh, so yeah, sit, uh, sit in, you know, get your popcorn ready, all that shit, cause we're gonna, we're gonna be here for a little bit. So I'm gonna be going, uh, class by class, and I'm gonna start giving, like, my like, overall general thoughts, like, different modes and all that kind of shit. I'm probably not gonna go over maps too much, um, but yeah. Alright, starting off with tanks, I definitely think Ball is super weak at the moment. The main problem with Ball, and what I have written here, I have a whole Google Doc of this shit. So, there is no other tank on the front line to support a bad ball. What I mean by that is in Overwatch 1, you can pretty much get away with like a pretty shitty ball and you can have like a like a good Sigma or like a Ryan carry and you'd still be okay. You don't have that anymore. You, you, you don't have the ability to uh, recover if there's a bad ball. If there's a bad ball, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have two supports and two DPS on front line. And you're lucky if you have two DPS on the front line because most people nowadays are peeling. They're peeling hard as shit because of how maps are built right now. So I... I don't know, man. Ball needs something, man. I mean, and the problem also is, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, he gets absolutely peed on. This current meta, if you do, if a ball gets caught in a Sojourn grenade, if he gets hacked, if he gets hit with a Discord, if he gets, you know, caught by Bastion, like, he's collapsed. Like, there's nothing you can do, so I don't, I don't know. I, I, Ball needs something. Ball needs something. I mean, his damage is fine, but I, I don't, I don't really know what what they would do with him. I, I don't, I don't know. And the thing is, you'll find, you'll find good balls still. Yes, I know it's funny, but you'll find good balls still. But because those p players are so experienced from Overwatch One, they already know how to maneuver around and and, and control space correctly. A lot of newer players, they're not gonna know how to play ball without looking at like 12 guides and shit. You know what I mean? Like the ball's learning curve is pretty steep compared to a lot of characters. Compared to a character like D.Va, for example. Anyone can pick up D.Va and become decent. You can't do that with ball. All right, number two, we have uh, Doomfist. Now, Doomfist is definitely in a weird spot. Um, I, I don't know. I, so I personally don't play Doomfist. I, I don't play Doomfist. I never played Doomfist in Overwatch 1. I really don't have a ton of criticisms I have for Doomfist other than that he's just, he's not threatening. I have never been in a game where I'm like, oh shit, this Doomfist is fucking terrifying. I need to stay away. As opposed to like a Hog, for example, or an Orisa or a Zarya. You know what I mean? Like, Doomfist, like, there's just nothing scary about Doomfist. Also, I have DJ in here. Uh, DJ, do you care to comment on the state of Doomfist right now? Absolutely. I think Doomfist is, he's not strong. He's not strong in the current meta at all. The biggest problem with him is, I mean, like, he's great at making space for his team now that he's able to hit multiple people at once with one single charged fist. But the charged fist basically means nothing. Unless your enemy is a tracer or a DPS that has already had health, you're barely securing kills unless you're really, really accurate with the swinger cannons. But that is extremely difficult to use, especially for newer players. I was a Doomfist main back in Overwatch 1, so I kind of understand the mechanics of his finger launches a little bit better, but it is, it, it's not good for him right now. The, even like bouncing a character off of a wall doesn't get killed, so there's no, there's no reward for playing Doomfist, and you could barely defend against damage, so like if a Rhine or a D.Va or a Bastion or something is on the enemy team, and you're just trying to soak up as much damage as you can to charge up that fist, that isn't even one shot. A fully charged Doomfist, should one shot or at least get a decent amount of damage done it does not it does not I, i'm pretty sure at the current meta I, I can't even think about what number it does exactly but it is it's not very strong he's not a very strong pick at the moment unless you're doing a really strong dive push that you have the healers to support you and you can sustain and last a long time but overall he's just 
not the best right now. There's other characters that can do what he does a little bit better in my opinion. Yeah, especially like his block too is pretty ass because like it's not a shield, it's just for himself. Now does he get um health on his block or anything? He gets damage resistance a little bit, like he like from damage that he's getting from the front, it just goes straight into like like while he's blocking it doesn't take as much damage. But he can still be hit from the back. Honestly. Okay. <laughs> He can still get hit from the side. Everywhere else that he's not blocking, he's still vulnerable. And while he's blocking, he moves an insane amount slower, by the way. He is completely vulnerable while he's blocking. He has to put himself into danger in order to get a fully charged fist. But while he's right there, if he has no support, there's no one over there. They can, if, even if the entire team actually decides to just focus him while he's blocking, he can't outblock that. His block is fairly useless at the moment. Like, I see where they were going with the kid, but he's just not the same Doomfist as he was in Overwatch 1. You can't just hop in, fully charge up a block, hop out right quick, and then wait for the right moment, because by the time you're done blocking, you're already at like 100 health, in which any DPS that has half a brain can take you out easily. Easily. Yeah, I mean, you've been in parties with me in Overwatch 1 where, like, I'm mating Zen. I complain about a Doomfist just fucking me the entire game. I've never had to experience one time. I've never had to experience one time in Overwatch 2. I've, ne I've nev never felt a sense of fear or dread from my Doomfist in this game. Now, maybe also it's because it's early and people, you know, people are transitioning from Doomfist being a tank to Doomfist being, or transitioning from Doomfist being a DPS to being a tank. But I, I don't know, man. I, I like I, I understand where they're coming from because you don't want a tank to do too, too much damage because you don't want to have a Roadhog 2.0. You know what I mean? But I, I don't know. It's, it's weird. But see, the issue when it comes to Doom is he's not like the other tanks where a Roadhog can hook you and pull him to you. A Diva can dive, yes, and she has her shotgun like, like cannons, but she also has her matrix where she can deflect damage and hopefully walk back a little bit. Right. The other tanks have something where if shit goes wrong, they can defend themselves or get themselves out of the situation. Not, ju not Joker Queen, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, she, yeah, Joker still has her knife that can pull you towards her. Well, that's, well, that's, the, that's the problem. I'm, I'm, saying it, I'm saying if she's in trouble, if she's in trouble. I, the rally that she has is okay. I think I'll, I'll get it in more depth for Junger Queen in a second. Um, but I, I, know what you, I know what you mean. Yeah, but Doofus, he's in there. He's in. He's in. He has a, I believe, a six-second cooldown or something on, like, his it's eight. slam. It's oh, eight. Does, oh, the... He doesn't have... It's eight. Oh, no, I'm sorry. For the block, it's eight. Uh, four, yeah, for the slam, it's seven. Oh, okay, yeah. So he jumps in there, and then that leaves him with only two abilities. He has his block and he has his punch. He can block, hopefully. Like, if, if, if that jump in was just terrible, let's say he hops into a full comp. He didn't realize it was going to be that heavy. He was just trying to make some space for the team, but he needs to get out quickly. He has no means of escape. He has his punch, yes. But the amount of time you need to charge that punch, that's at least a solid second and a half before you can actually get a good distance with this punch. Because if you just tap it, you're not going anywhere. You can try to block to, so to hopefully sustain, but that could be just, you can just go around him, or you can all, the entire team could just focus him. He has no way of getting in there and actually doing something unless he is with someone. I and mean, the, character, I, the thing about that is, is like, I, I don't know, man. Like, I. I'm on the side of I would rather have Doomfist be undertuned than overtuned because the problem is you'll really start running into problems. That, like, like I'm used to him one-shotting people in Overwatch uh, two or Overwatch one, and I get why they're trying to avoid that, especially for like supports and squishies. Especially like look at his health pool. Like, can you imagine if Doomfist was one-shotting people again with his health pool? You know what I mean? Like he'd be a fucking menace. I, uh, so I don't I don't know how they would balance it. I think I think it was just a mistake to make him a tank in general. To make him a tank, but they just wanted another tank. That was that was their only reason. They just wanted another tank. There was no actual reason to be like, oh hey, let's just completely take this character that people know and love and are already good with. And yeah, because Reaper like tank. shits on him now. It's ridiculous. Reaper pees on him. He, that was that used to be one of Reaper's biggest counters back in Overwatch. But it was like if you had if they had a Reaper, oh you could go do this and keep that quick kill because he can't. Like if you wait for him, uh, Reaper to be done with his little ghosty ghost thing, I just can't with the ability he's called, and then uh, you right. punch him, mm. then that, that's it, that's it. You secure that kill. Right. And 
they tried to balance Doomfist out with the one-shot kills by giving him an increased cooldown for his punch, which made sense, but at the same time, it's his only ability! Back then, he had the slam and the uppercut so that he could possibly escape, and then he could hit from multiple different directions, but now he only has the slam. They replaced the uppercut and just put it all into one ability with his slam, and it's not trash. He could get a lot of distance from it, but the utility, from, like, isn't there like how it used to be from Overwatch 1. It's nowhere near what it used to be because you used to be able to, let's say, just uppercut into the air, get a quick view of what's going on, see where everybody's at, punch over to that direction. So you can have height and everything, and you wouldn't, you'd still have a whole nother ability that you could use. Now, if you use your slam, it is because it's your uppercut and your slam mixed into one, that's it. That's it. You just lost half of your mobility abilities, and one of them is your main attack. The other one is your main attack. He can, he, he'll jump in there and have no way of securing a kill. Right. Zero way of securing a kill. He can yes. put down the damage to hopefully allow his team to get a kill, but in terms of him, no. Getting any 1v1 with Doomfist is pretty much me. Even against, let's go, if he even punches a Tracer, he can't even one-shot that. That's yeah, I just, I just did, I just did that. I just uh, punched a Tracer and slammed her and only did half her health, which is crazy. That, that That's crazy. Even if you have a full charge Doomfist punch, or rocket punch, it doesn't one shot the tracer. Mm -hmm. That that's way too much. Yeah. I see what they were doing, trying to keep him balanced because he's a tank now and he has a larger health pool, but it's at the point where his punch is useless. He might as well not even have it. They really just need to take him back to being a DPS because I really don't see what, need, what like what the fuck is happening. Take him back. No no I think he's fine as a tank, but they need to take him back and workshop him. They need to do something. He is not strong at all right now. He, no, he's like, weak as hell. Take the people from Overwatch 1 who know how to play Doomfist and are already good with the air mechanics and all that, who are already good with movement style and play style and who knows what, and, and who knows what healers he works well with, that he, they can still do well with him, yes, they can still do well, but he is in no way, shape, or form a good pick. Mm. He's kind of a pick where, like, a lot of people think of him as a throw pick, and they're not entirely wrong about that. He can't protect his team like like a Ryan or a Sig or a hell even a Diva or a Zarya. He can displace very well, yeah, but the punch he can kind of displace the whole team. But other tanks do that better. Wrecking Ball, Winston, um, hell, even uh, I'd say like Roadhog, he displaced pretty well with his hook, and he he can't get in there and do significant damage to anyone and that was the only thing that he had in overwatch one he's just a character that's a pretty much a question mark right now nobody knows what he should be right. and that's kind of sad because he's my favorite character besides ryan yeah yeah I, I i pretty much agree um i honestly i would rather them just like make doomfist back to being a dps but that can be kind of scary i if they're taking him back to being a dps they can take away his block because it's gonna give him way too much sustain but uh, that's just that's I, how i feel as much as we would like that to happen i don't think they're gonna do it i think after they put as much time and effort into making him a tank, they, they wanted him to be a tank for some reason. Mm -hmm. For some reason. I don't know exactly what reason they gave themselves to be like, oh, let's put him a tank. Maybe it was so that he wouldn't be as oppressive, but it makes no sense if that was their case because there was a bunch of other characters that were oppressive at a time as damage. It's just this one character was really oppressive to like their backline and support, but Somber was like that. Somber, you think she could get back there fairly easily, invisible in fact, to take out the support fairly easily. Granted, it wasn't a one shot, but it was just as effective. Hell, probably even better because you couldn't kill her as easily. Mm -hmm. You just teleport away. Um, May, for a bit of a time, was just insane as a DPS. And there was a time where you were just able to get easy one shots by freezing them and that was like in like what two seconds at mm. least doing this you had to like charge it he was vulnerable at that point you still had time to like dodge and you could make him waste and there was a whole lot of ways to counter do this but they hadn't i don't know why they changed the tank but i don't think they're ever going to change it back to damage but they do need to just do something they need to workshop him go back and take a look at either his damage or his honestly i would be more content if they dropped the amount of health he had or hell take him take away some of the armor and give him more health, but make his damage a bit higher, or like, like I don't know. They could do something, but just, he is not in a good spot. He's not in a good way. Yeah. All right, I think we're gonna move on to uh, Junker Queen, because we ranted about Doomfist for about 10 minutes. <laughs> um, I don't want this video to be like three minutes long. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For this one. I haven't for sure. Junker Queen enough to actually. For sure. Yeah, so uh, Junker Queen's weird. Um, 
I wrote in my notes that her damage is pretty piss poor, but that's just not true. I don't know. I something about like what in game she's just not like that scary unless she's you're like directly in her face. I I, I don't really know. Um, kind of a similar feeling with junk, but you know, uh, Doomfist. I don't really like shit myself if I see a junk queen, cause like I, I just stay away from her. Now her ultimate is very strong. I think I think it's kind of fine as it is. Um, it's more kind of like a like a controlled diva nuke where it, it's a lot of its main use is crowd control. It's CC. So if you want to like get people quickly off an objective or something like that, I love her ultimate. Um, even like the length of what it is, I, I think it's fine. I, I think it's fine. It's loud. You can see it. Um, I don't really have anything to complain about for her ult wise, honestly. I mean, like, if you get caught in it, that's tough. Um, her knife, it's it, it's fine. I think, I don't know, I just, I, I think Joker Queen is okay. I think she just needs a little bit of survivability um, because, like, her rally or whatever, I mean, it does. It, 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 you know, I can't even say that it doesn't, even does, like, it doesn't heal enough because I, I went from 425 to 6 something. So I can't really say that. I don't know, just Joker Queen, just something about. There's something about it, man. I don't know. Just she doesn't feel like crazy threatening to me. Maybe I should. I think I think I need more time with her before I uh, talk about anything. Now here is where me and DJ uh, kind of kind of disagree. So I think Orisa is fine. Um, the problem is that she takes away attention from DPS because supports are pumping so much uh, healing into her because she can spit out so much damage so quickly. So really, like. Arissa, like you can see clips of like Shroud, for example, like he's like he's like a like an aimbot machine on his Arissa. Like Arissa's, her damage is very good. Um, I like the fact that her, you know, her thing is on a cooldown. Preferably, I would like it if it was like a little faster to you know get hot, a little faster to get overloaded. But I mean, I, I see why. You know, it's fine where it is. Um, it drops off relatively quick. I don't have an issue with that. Her javelin's crazy. Her javelin can stun people out of all of that. That's really good. That's really good. I actually think. That works a lot in her favor. That incentivizes, you know, having good aim. So, I, I the javelin. There's a pretty long wind up on that animation too. So if you get caught with it, I mean, that's kind of your that's kind of your fault. So I mean, I don't. Moved on to a reset. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about reset right now. Um, I, I mean, if you get caught lacking with that javelin, you're probably most likely in the middle of a team fight or something like that. Um, her ultimate, it's. A little, it's a little weak, but I think it's fine where it is. I, it's kind of similar to a sig ult, where again, it's CC, and, and you'll see this. You know, we talk about a lot of these tanks. Is that majority of it is getting people off point or getting them in position for another DPS to do something. That's still strong. The, if you like wind it up to like two hundred percent or even like one hundred percent, it can still do some pretty good damage. But you can get out of it pretty easily. You know what I mean? Um, or you can just kill her. Um, which most people are going to like, you know, either discord, anti her or something uh, when she's winding up because she's just standing there. So I don't know. She's not like moving around like Sigma. So I don't know. I don't have a ton of complaints about Arissa. Um, now we move on to uh, we, we move on to my favorite tank that I want to talk about. I wrote Zarya needs a nerf. Holy shit. In all caps. Um, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with Zarya, man. Now a lot of. Jesus Christ. I'm not gonna make this too long because I'm gonna try to make this video about 45 minutes, but holy shit, Zarya is oh my god. So for those that don't know, so Zarya has two bubbles on each. She can put a bubble on herself and then she can also put a bubble on somebody else. The issue that you will come into contact with is that the uh the speed at which you transition from bubble to bubble is crazy. So I think it's about I don't know, I'm about to use this one bubble. I think it's like something like three. It's like eight seconds or something like that. But each bubble lasts about like 1.8. I swear to God, it feels so much faster when you take damage. You can have Zarya's, the amount of sustain you will see most Zarya's have and the damage they can pump out is fucking ludicrous. It's crazy. Bro, look at any comp match. Go, you get a, a look up a comp match right now. If a team is losing, their first pick will be Zarya. I promise you. It's not going to be Hog. It's not going to be Ride. It's going to be Zarya because the amount of damage. Also, she got to 100 so quick with these two shields. I mean, it. you don't really need that crazy of track to dominate with Zarya, bro. It's just, it's crazy. I I don't know. They need to either reduce the amount of time that she has with her bubble to, you know, 
build up damage or whatever, or they need to increase the interval in which you get bubbles. I don't know. This is, this is stupid at the moment. I can't really show this because I'm in a training ground, but I mean, yeah, I just, uh, oh man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get a headache talking about Zarya. So I'm just. Ugh. Do I say something about no, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Alright, so they tried, they tried. <laughs> I can see where they tried to keep her balanced. You're only able to have two bubbles out at a, at a time. So you can't have two bubbles on two people and then a bubble on yourself. So they, 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 they tried to keep her balanced. But I think the issue doesn't come about with how many bubbles she has. <laughs> It comes about how quickly these things charge up. Dude, because I'm going right now, and that's the thing you'll see. You don't see, not to say you don't see Zarya's put bubbles on their teammates. I've been playing, yeah, you know, I main support. There are not a lot of times I'm getting saved from Zarya putting a bubble on me. They're just frontline edges using on themselves because they don't need to. Because they don't need to. You know what I mean? I think whoever was designing her right now was smoking crack, bro. <laughs> yeah, they was on that nut shit. And, and even in trading rounds right now, I put a bubble on myself and just have the robot shoot at me. I can get all the way up to 12%. Throw that into a whole team comp where everybody's aim is reliably significantly better than these training robots. And they're pumping out a lot more damage. Well, and the thing is, bro, is that you have a lot of shitters for some reason that just keep shooting these Zarya bubbles. You have people that just, they don't care. They don't care. It's the new they don't know. They they don't know, bro. And you have to explain to them, and then they're like, uh, okay. And I, to this day, I do not know if Barbara's shields or bubbles have a damage like the past. Like I have a max. Like if I put like two or three hundred damage into a bubble, is it gonna still be there or does it break? I have no idea. I don't. I don't remember off the top. I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say yes, but I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I I have like some vague memories of like. Getting bubbled by Zarya and a Reaper ult and it going away relatively quick, so I think there's a cap, but I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. Okay, I have no idea as well either. Because if not, overpowered as all hell. Well, that's the problem too, is because like 100% Zarya, you could just straight up bully a backline by just lobbing those bombs. Like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I mean, golly. And here's another issue. In Overwatch 1, it was a little bit more balanced when it came to Zarya because she wasn't able to push up on like the characters that had like shields very well. Like Ryan, she wasn't really able to push up on because Ryan would bully her because he did more damage when they were up close and he was able to do it more reliably. A recent when she had her shield, she was able to shoot through it and be able to just keep Zarya at a distance while she was trying to put a bubble on herself and then just put the damage down afterwards. Then she didn't have as well as good of bubbles, but like obviously. It was a thing. Sigma, if he's able to keep his distance, is obviously really strong against Zarya. But right now, with Sigma, Winston, and Reinhardt being the only characters with shields, the other tanks are getting chewed alive because she's out. Zarya shits on every tank besides maybe Roadhog and maybe Junker Queen. She pee she pees on Doomfist. She pee she is Zar she is Diva's biggest counter. You are actually throwing like, he, like listen to me. You are throwing if you're playing Diva into a Zarya. Like, yeah, you can get in her face, and you can try, and you can, you know, hit her rockets or whatever, but I don't know, man. If you have a Zarya that's getting healing pumped into her, there's no way you're winning that fight. I'm sorry. There's just not. She, 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 Zarya takes a shit on Sigma, bro. I'm telling you, like, it's crazy. Especially if she gets close. Sigma has Yes, yes. But honestly, nobody does. And the DPS, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, no, you're not. I mean, you, I mean, I'm, I mean, here's the, but that, that's, I mean, do you have cases where you hit scan? There's a lot of value in hit scan right now. Sojourn. Well, I mean, I hit scan, but I mean, a railgun is, you know what I mean? Hit, uh, Sojourn, Ash, Cass, they shit on Zarya. They, they pee on Zarya pretty goddamn hard, I would argue. If they're good. We gotta still go with that fact if they're good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I get what you mean. More about that. We start getting into the state of overwatching yeah. and play and the rest of that. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yes, yeah, we got, oof. Oh, we got a lot. We're, we are halfway done. Ooh, shit, okay. Oh, my all right. God. All right, but we can move on for now. All right. Uh, <laughs> I put Echo is gone. I, I just put Echo is gone. <laughs> Echo is, I, I don't see, I don't see Echoes. Not on tanks. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have any thoughts, like, anywhere, like, on tanks. I think Ryan's fine. I think Sigma's fine. Like, I don't really have anything, like, glaring issues. Um, Hog feels stronger to me than an Overwatch uh, 1, but not, like, by much. I, it's real, just... It's still an issue of stay out of his line of sight and you're fine, so... I don't know. Uh, Hog doesn't 
you know, a, a good hog is still terrifying, but you, you don't see as many, like, backline hogs anymore. Um, yeah, Echo's just gone. I don't see Echo. And probably uh, a lot of it's because of Sojourn's uh, presence. Also, Widowmaker is everywhere. Like, you used to see a lot of Widowmaker in, like, comp games where people knew that they were good and they would just shit on the lobby because um, they were smurfs or something like that. But just, I mean, there's Widowmakers, like, everywhere now. And a lot of them are actually pretty decent. Yeah, a lot of them are actually pretty good. Um, Sojourn, I mean, like, she, I would assume she just kind of takes a big old shit on Echo if she's, you know, mid-range. Um, plus she can, you know, get in the air, too, so, I don't know, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know what they can do for Echo, I'm, I don't really know, I just, I don't see her, I, I don't see her. She doesn't, she's not in a bad spot right now, I think the sad thing is she's just really one of those characters that people just don't gravitate towards, or gravitate towards, because she's in the same so as far, to be honest, she can still put up pretty decent amount of damage from the air and she can play above like people so it's like she could get around a good tank shield like she could get around a Ryan, she could get around an Arisa and do a lot of damage she could go after their backup she's not useless a lot of people a lot of the problem is like getting close and hitting those like that her laser her beam that's a very dangerous game to play because if you have a uh, dps that knows what they're doing they're not gonna let you get close up to hit that beam they'll hear you coming or just and just shit on you oh, yeah. you know what i mean but to be honest, I think the beam for the most part should be used on tanks anyway, because it does a lot more damage when they're after half health. Right. But I, I, I don't think she's weak right now. She feels really strong whenever I play it. No, I don't. No, I don't think she's weak. I just, I don't, I don't. I think she's just not it. Like she's just an off meta pick. Like she's not, she's not bad, but yeah. she's just average. Like she's just painfully average. Zafira does her job better. I think that's. I agree. I, I Farah, I mean, Farah does her job better at the moment. Um, as far as like putting pressure on people. Um, just because far is so easy, like Echo, you gotta be, you gotta play a little weird, like play Echo, like around like Echo's projectile based primary, you know what I mean? And a lot of people aren't used to that. The picture of Doomfist and Kibar right now with their weird finger cannons, dog. They're so weird to hit sometimes. Yeah. Because they split apart, like you have to be fairly close in order to get like your shots down pretty well. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people can struggle with that, especially at range, mm -hmm. because she is a flying hero. She's a flying hero, so you have to. Might be able to have like pretty decent aim, especially if you're kind of high up. But I, I, I don't see Echoes playing high up anyway. I, even when I do see them, they're not playing her in what at least the Overwatch one would consider the white the right way to play her. Right. So yeah, uh, that about does it for Echo. I don't really know what they're gonna do. Um, Genji. Here's the thing. I like play a considerable amount of Genji, and I'm still not very good. Um, but like, I don't personally think genji's like too bad and the reason i say this is because it's really it's really fucking easy to counter genji now because you have people like zarya sabra uh, may uh, uh, fucking Farah. like his counters are pretty much everywhere you know what i mean so I, it's like people see a good don't get me wrong a good genji can be pretty scary like they can start ghosting they can just get fast as shit like their sensitivity is crazy and they're that's because they're a good player but the kid that they're working with is not crazy good i mean they're probably gonna nerf genji but i honestly don't see not i don't see why i mean i kind of get it but like i don't know man again I, I main zen and i haven't seen like a crazy crazy amount of genjis i've been like holy shit i need to switch i've mean, seen a, oh, a, a fair amount but nothing like too out of the ordinary that's just me um how about we get the pick that we already we already know you're about to go off on oh no oh no i got junk rat first no i got i got junk rat first <laughs> Um, yeah, Junkrat's ult is still fucking ridiculous. It, I, it, it's, it's weight. No, 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 no. Because we're playing a character whose main thing is projectile. The odds that you are going to hit that fucking, that, that rip tire. Oh my God. Especially if he's like launched over a wall and behind you. Like, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. Run. What? Bro, I mean Zen. What do you mean run? What do you mean? What are we, a tactical sprint? That's a huge problem, bro. That's, that's the only problem. It's just that he's just a present to you. Where, there's a bunch of other characters you have killed or who have ults that can insta kill like that. You get caught out of place with the McCree and his dead eye, you're done. If you get caught out of place with the soldier and he has his freaking visor, you're done for it. Like, he's not the only one. The only thing that I think is that even if you kill the junk rat, you can still control this rip tire. I don't know why that was ever a thing. I mean, it doesn't really matter because I mean, like, it's still kind of a net. Now I would say it's a net loss because if you kill him and kill his tire, like, that's just a fucking L. But, like, no, I can get dangerous when you kill a junk rat and his tire kills three people on a point. Like, that fucking sucks. Exactly. And this ain't Overwatch 1 where that's only half the team. Now, 
Now you gotta retreat. Right. The, the, the huge change from five or from six people down to five is it's, it's a it's a big difference. This we can't undersell that either. It's really really bad just losing one person because right. it used to be where Junkrat could take out one or two people you could be like okay we can still make this work but we have to get this junk rat out of here we still have four people left we, this isn't a dead push but we have to we have to like ring it in and if junk rat takes out two people now that's either a whole tank and like one other you you gotta pray for an anna nano and a, in some ways ultimate to to win that team fight exactly. exactly because it's like now we're down to one tank if he takes out the tank possibly dead pushed anyhow because the tanks are really like the linchpin of this game at the moment like they are so strong they bring everything together they are the thing that actually is keeping overwatch like going right now because if it were just the dps i feel like it'd just be team death that's all the way and everybody would just be dying the tank kind of drives whatever or whoever's gonna win so if he takes out the tank then it's already a dead push. So I can understand how you can think that. And it's a lot easier to get a kill on a tank when you have a remote control tire. But it's it's not overpowered, I think. I think he's in a good spot, but not broken. Mm -hmm. I think it's just annoying for the healer. It's just annoying. Also, 200 damage on his mind is bullshit. I don't... I, also, yeah. I, I, that's, I, that's, I, that's, 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 that's bullshit. That's, that's bullshit. The fact that he can just dive into an enemy backline and instantly kill an auto or a mercy is fucking ridiculous. I, I hate that. I, I don't know why. They, it's just, love, it's just 850. I don't know why they changed it. It's fucking ridiculous. I love how they take away Doomfist's one-shot ability, but if he drops a mine on a freaking junk rat trap and then, like, a somber steps into that, that's Koduro. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what my Mushu. All right. Speaking of Sombra, oh buddy. Hello. All right, all right. I've talked about her. I talked about her and nauseum. I've made like three shorts on this shit. But just to recap, uh, Sombra can hack you while she's invisible. She can be detected, so she'll flash for a second, but it doesn't fucking matter. And she, ha if you get hacked, she does an increased forty percent damage on you, which is ridiculous. Also, her ultimate takes away forty percent of your health as well, which is fucking great. Um, yeah, man, I don't know what they were smoking with Sombra. Sombra needs a nerf. She needs it uh, now. She needs it fast. Okay. Um, she makes she makes playing support. She makes the playing support not fun. There, there's a Sombra in every game. <laughs> she needs a nerf. Yes. Now, I don't think she's as broken as a lot of people make that decision. The, the hack ability, absolutely. Bring that down because 40% is actually... Zen is at 25, bro! And they nerfed Zen because of how he how he coordinates with tanks. And they, they gave her 40? Not 35, not 30, but 40, bro. You're close with Sombra. You can throw it no, you don't. No, you don't. You can hack a far out of the sky. What are you talking about? <laughs> but she's not. No, uh, 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 uh no, no, it's pretty far. Discord or about somebody from anywhere. Somebody you still have oh, it's far with Zen, but don't make it seem like it's a short distance with Samba, bro. It's I bad. Think, I think 40 is way too much, but I think it shouldn't be 25 or 20 like what Zen has. I think she should be slightly above the, like, whatever Zen's Discord is. But... I do think they were on that nut when they were saying that. They were smoking, boy, they were smoking that strong. So I think I'm about like, I don't fucking know, like, let me see. So I'm at, what, is this 15? Yeah, I think, this is, I think I'm at 15 meters. Let me see if I can hack this real quick, hold on. So. I'll be back in trade too. We go yeah, you're good. That. Okay, so I, yeah, so at 15 meters, she can hack you. That's fucking ridiculous. That made my day. That's just, God, Jesus, man. No, it's. No, I'm sorry. It's 10 meters. I'm sorry. So 10, you can hack somebody from up no, to 10 it's meters. Is it 15? No, it's definitely 15. Oh, oh yeah. no, no, it's 10. No, yeah, it's 10. Okay. That's not fun. No, 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 it, no, no, no. Play, play Lucio. Play Lucio. You tell, and you tell me how far it feels. That's, that's not my fault. That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay, if you don't, okay, if you don't know if you're listening, if you're listening to this, you don't know. DJ does not main support. He doesn't get it. He, but supports got it bad right now. Supports are struggling right now. It's bad. It's hard out here. It's crazy. Ah, oh boy. It's not very far. It's not very far. It's not very far. But if you're playing, but but if you're playing Zen. And you get hacked with that shit, you're cl you're done. You're done. 86, no mas. That's her whole kit, though. She I know. To be the backline support killer. I know, I know, but still, and the people can say, oh, but you, but you, you, you kill Sombra communication. I mean, also a good diva pretty much shits on a Sombra anyway, but like, 
they, you're just requiring communication from your team, which yeah, I don't know if y'all get it, but motherfuckers are not in voice chat anymore. Like, it just doesn't happen. Also, yeah, 40% on her ult. From so quick, from so far away. Yeah, yeah, 40% on her ultimate too. Like, why? It's just weird. It's just, it's just weird. I think I still need to test out some of what her ultimate does. To be honest, I still have no idea what it does. I thought at first that it only hacked them like what it nah. does, but it just applies to the entire team. But it, I, I also know that hacks take away characters who have shields. Yeah. It takes, it takes away everything. It just, it just shut, it shuts you down. You get your abilities faster, but the damage still lingers for a lot for a longer time. I, my only thing is, I know it's really bad for Zed because he has shields, and you can hack away shields. So uh -huh. like characters you like Sigma, you can hack away. Ha or like Ana, bro. You hack an Ana, she doesn't get a chance to sleep. You, she's getting shit on. Yeah, she's getting shit. But it's it, it, it's the hack. Isn't what feels broken in the sense that like like how far it's just how much damage like like increase she gets like 40 percent is wow wow mm -hmm. that, that's that fucking ridiculous job. all right and the, the hacking while invisible thing okay okay but I that's od that's od for a little bit longer that's so od something with the detection <laughs> And this goes crazy. Her, her Uzi, or excuse me, her uh, SMG. It's not like it's bad at long range, dude. Like it's, it's pretty good. I'm testing it at 15 meters right now. It's not bad, dude. It's certainly not bad. Um. It still does a decent amount of damage. Yeah. 20 I, meters is where it starts to kind of fall off. If I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Widowmaker. I said something about Widowmaker. Yeah, Widowmaker's everywhere, but it's not like her presence is like bad or anything like, i mean if you're good with widowmaker that means you're just a good player like i don't see widow I, her the thing about widow is that she has a very very high skill cap and if you're good with widow that means you're generally just good at the game so i don't really see where there's an issue with widow i i don't know i mean i just i don't know i don't i, I don't see anything with rewarding accuracy like that so hey i mean like Reaper kind of shits on a widow, but she can just snipe his head off if you know gets next to her. So I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I mean I don't have any complaints about widow. All right, actually, hmm. I would like to take a sec to acknowledge what the hell they did to May <laughs> because she's okay. It's really good right now. She's good, really but, good. Uh, but she's not crazy. No, 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 she's not crazy, but she kind of is a better like like she. She's almost a tank in a way, the way she's able to disrupt and displace like half, like half of like an enemy team. And it's kind of crazy. Her main ability now, like, like her main, her primary, it doesn't freeze anymore, but it does heavily slow. And she can just cut you off with that wall now, which comes back a lot faster, I'm pretty sure, than what it did in Overwatch 1. I think it's the same off the top of my head, but I can't confirm that. I thought it was 12 seconds in Overwatch 1, but right now they have it at 10. And the way that she is, I don't know, she feels really strong right now. But also, also, I can't stand her her little popsicle thing ability. Her icicle? I mean, that's I, that's kind of a similar thing with, you know, with, um, that's just rewarding accuracy. That's a projectile that hits you hard as hell. So I don't, I don't. It's oh, fine. Talking about her thing where she hops into like her little popsicle thing and she. Oh, that her heel. Lock of eyes. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, she's always had that viability. I mean, that's kind of the whole yeah. point of playing May too. Like, if you're like, if your supports aren't be able to keep up or something like that, then I mean, yeah, you play May or Hog or something like that, or like Soldier. You know what I mean? I think her being able to fully heal, that's crazy. Yeah, well, the thing is, you, you start getting maze that know how to transition from the icicle to the ice wall and sit, like keep the max amount of sustain, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she feels really, really good right now. I kind of yeah. like the changes that they did from Overwatch 1. I think she's fine. I, I, think, I think she's fine. Yeah. Um, all right. So moving on to support. All right, I said Briggs Shield could go up by 50 and no more. Uh, I, I, and the reason I say this is because the meta is so quick now because it's 5v5. She has less protection as far as like frontline because you're not going to frontline Brig, but you're mainly playing midline. So when you have 
a sojourn and a soldier just peppering your shield because you have a Junker Queen on you instead of a Ryan, like your shield's gonna go down pretty quick. Or an Orissa or a Zarya, you know what I mean? Like her shield, like I mean, I can average about seven thousand, you know, with her uh, shield, but I, I, you know, seven thousand damage mitigation, but that's like double overtime. Like it's, I don't, I don't rely on my shield like that. I'm playing on like corners and stuff like that. I'm playing real slow with Briggs, so I, I don't know. I. I I, I really just like want her shield to get more, but that's about it. Um, I think her healing's okay. I don't think it's fantastic or anything, but I think it's fine. I think it's fine for what it is, for, for what you're running. You know, like anti-dive comps and stuff like that. So I don't really have that many complaints with Brig. That's what she's mostly for. I, I think giving her the extra 50 on the shield could like benefit her. It doesn't, I don't think that would make too, too much of a difference, but like add a little bit of ease of play and a little bit better quality quality of life for any Brig player, but yeah, I think she's in an okay spot yeah. right now. She could definitely reliably stop a Sombra if she's mm -hmm. with her supports. Or, like, if honestly a Sombra were to try to push her, I could think that a Brig could actually probably contend and, like, at least, like, do something about it. But the rest of the supports is going to be a little bit of a struggle. Right. Um, Moira. No, nah, I'm, I'm talking about Kiriko real quick. I mean, so uh, Kiriko, I don't really know. Um, if your accuracy is great, if your accuracy is on point, then you know you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot of value out of Kiriko. You can, you know, uh, get the cleanse, uh, you know, like status effects and all that. I just, I don't know, man. I, again, very high skill cap character. If you have a bad Kiriko on your team, you're gonna feel it. Um, like they're gonna not know how to teleport and get out of situations. They're not gonna know when to cleanse. Um, her ult's got a lot of value. I don't really see anything wrong with her ult. I think her ult's fine. Um, there was a, I, don't, I gotta find a clip, but there was a clip I got the other day where I had a Baptiste window, a Kiriko ult, and I, uh, I was playing Soldier and I ulted. Dude, I've never seen that much damage get put out ever. It was ridiculous. So, I mean, I don't know. I think, I think Kiriko's, I think she's okay. Yes. For what she is, it's like a sort of healer that does damage. I think she's all right. I think she's okay. It, again, a very high skill cap character. Um, I think her healing, yeah, her healing's fine. Um, I, you definitely would need like a main main heal because she's. De I would definitely. She's using off field. There's no way I'm putting her as main heal. There's absolutely yeah. no way. Um, so you like a Kiriko and a Zen. If you're going for damage, that's the comp to go. That's the comp to go. But if you're going for healing and like sustain, that is not what you want to do. That is not what you want to do. <laughs> if y'all are just here to get kills, then y'all yes. the right character. Yes, but yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't have too much too, too much to say about uh, Kiriko. Uh, Moira players. Um. I'm not gonna go into. I'm not gonna go into too much. I'm not gonna go into too much. I talked about this in length in a previous video. Um, oh, okay then. Yeah, there. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of the reason that Moira's played right now is because of the amount of sustain uh, that she has. Wow. Uh, e I guess ease of use. You don't have her primary is just hold left to heal yourself and do damage and kill the other team. You're seeing a lot more backline Moiras than you would see in Overwatch One. Like it was crazy. It gets crazy. Um, is she, it's just, is she, it's just, is she so easy? She's so easy. Also, if you don't trust your team, you can, you need to play Moira. You know what I mean? Because she has some of the best, like Baptiste and Moira is, I think the definitive, like most amount of healing you can get uh, per burst. Like it's crazy. Um, it's just, she's just, she's just so easy. So I don't know. They need to do something. Um, her fade, it's not even like their fade, like super overpowered, but like as soon as she gets in trouble, she'll just fade and then she'll damage orb you, suck you in, and that's it. You're dead. I mean, like Reaper pees on her pretty hard. So it's not that, that big of an issue. Same thing with like Cass and like most DPS, but you really don't want to get mid range, close range with the Moira because she'll just kill you. Um, yeah, I just, I don't like Moira. Um, Zen. Zen, Zen, Zen. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. He feels pretty okay right now to me. He's good. He's good, but I just. So okay, here's here's the thing, right? So in terms of healing, he's ass, right? He, he's pretty ass. Trance is the biggest thing you're getting. Really, where you want to aim a lot of your uh, your. Uh, your healing orbs is on like diving DPS, like a Genji getting in the front line because he's dueling a, a soldier in the mid line. You want to have a disc or you want to have a healing orb on him or uh, an Orisa or something like that. But like if a, if a tank is like critical, they're not getting saved from a healing orb. You know what I mean? Like there's, exactly. it, you know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's still 45. Like you're, it's not, 
I don't know. I, I I don't know. I don't like his healing is just not fast enough to keep up. But his damage is a lot, is crazy right now. The kick that he does is uh, really really good. I've been begging for him to get some sort of like vi uh, viability or escape. He has that with the kick now. Um, I have that clip on my channel where this Genji was just harassing me and I just kept kicking him away and killing him. Like that's what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know. I I think Zen's good. I think Zen feels good. He feels strong. I just I, I would like to see a lot more players be attracted to Zen rather than Kiriko or Moira or stuff like that because I feel like really really good Zens are hard to come by nowadays um okay that's all I have for heroes um I didn't say anything about Lucio I didn't say anything about Mercy I think they're all fine if I didn't mention them offhand that's because I think they're fine I don't see anything crazy wrong with them and again, this is just my and DJ's opinion, so feel free to disagree. If you're going to disagree, at least, you know, keep it silver and all that. Now, as far as competitive stuff goes, I don't know, man. It's so weird. There's a ton of problems right now. It's That's so weird. Ranking. So with the ranking, it's this very arbitrary number of seven wins and 20 losses is where you'll get adjusted rank if you go up or down it's it's, it's so weird if it showed me like where i'm going or how far i have to go it's fine whatever but i don't know I, i'm wondering how where they're generating these numbers from you know what i mean because you could see that in overwatch one you could see it but i don't know i feel like it's better for someone that like lives in competitive for like myself personally because like the other day in my uh dps i jumped from gold four to gold one and i was surprised i made that jump that was a that's a huge jump so I, I don't know uh, and like on my uh you know on my support i'm plat one right now i don't know i legit don't know if i'm gonna stay at plat one or if i'm gonna jump to you know diamond four i don't know so it, it's so weird um push uh, take push out of the game <laughs> i'm about to say take push out of the game push. I don't like push. I don't. I don't like push. I because if you're getting here's the thing. If you're getting your back blown out in push, it's not fun. It's not fun. They're in your spawn. It's not Is it fun. Any match? It, it's not. But you but you feel a lot more in push. What I mean by that is so with push, if your team is at like forty in the direction you want to go and the enemy team is at hundred twenty, the odds of you taking that back are not very high and they're slim to none. You know what I mean? Even like 80 to 80 to 80 to 45, 80 to 50. That's still kind of, uh, that's about a team fight or two. So I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I like push. I think it's actually a very good, like, intro, or like addition to like Overwatch 2. I think maybe they possibly could. I, I honestly want longer tracks, like rather than what they have. I'm like, it's nice that they give us the 10-minute time interval to play and, like, be able to, like, make a change because if you are getting, like, your back blown out and pushed, it can be a little bit of a struggle to, like, go back and try to catch the dub. But it's what makes it fun rather than, like, being at an objective. Somebody's already at, like, or, like, their team's already at, like, 98%. You guys are barely at, like, 10 it's a lot more achievable to get a W back and push than that because then they're just holding a point. They have time to set up and all that. But this is just, like, you actually need the skill and the teamwork to actually coordinate and try to like get back to the point. So you have to do it multiple times. I think I think push is a good addition. It's a whole different type of game mode. I think the right type of people can like thrive in it. And I think it just hasn't hit the competitive scene yet where everybody's like, okay, this is the type of way that we play. They haven't developed a very good like comp for it. They haven't developed a very good strategy for it. So I think it's just in a very weird spot, but I think we should definitely keep it. I got you. All right, now I'm gonna talk about uh, Blizzard shitty business practices. So, oh my God, oh my God. Let me go out to the main menu. Let me go out to the main menu because I got a shit ton to say. Okay, so if you don't know, Blizzard uh, transitioned to the uh, battle pass uh, style of doing things. I just procedure my battle. Okay, there we go. So, okay. This is a god awful business model. What they're doing, the battle pass by itself is fine. Whatever, who cares? That, that, when you a lot of live service games are transitioning to this type of style, so it's whatever. I, I don't care. The issue, the issue that we're running into is individual skins being so expensive. Now I know what you'll say. Oh, but they had the league skins. Those were always expensive. Those were like fifteen, whatever, like that. That's 
whatever. Because the league skins, those are like premium, premium, and those rarely come around. You know what I mean? So if you want to charge that expensive, whatever. Who cares? You know what I mean? Why are you charging? Why are you charging? Fit was it twenty six dollars? Is it was twenty six dollars for this new Kiriko bundle? Is it not? The new Kiriko skin is hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, let me let's go to let's go. Yeah, to it's twenty it's twenty six hundred. It's thirty percent off now. How much is that? So you need to buy the twenty two hundred pack. First. Uh -huh. So that's twenty dollars, and then the five hundred pack, which is five dollars. So then you'll have a hundred left over, but that's that's what you need. You have to spend twenty five dollars if you were at zero. Uh, Overwatch coins in order to get this Kiriko skin. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And here's the thing. I knew. I already knew they were on some shit when they added the charms and the souvenirs. I knew they were on some shit when they added these. Because I'm like, what's the point of these? Who cares? Right? Who cares about this souvenir that you just... It's like an emote or something. Like, no one cares. I've never seen anyone use a souvenir. But it's literally just a way so they can monetize the game even more. Because no one gives a shit about this. Bro, and here's the thing. If, please, say something. I employ, you, I employ you. If you are listening to this, if you, if you think this is a bad system, speak up and say something. And also, just don't buy it. Do not buy anything. If you want to buy the Battle Pass, that's whatever, bro. Because at least you're getting value out of this. You're getting what? I think, like, what? Like, like... You get 80 items, but like, you're like, it's like six skins or something like that. You get the Cyber Demon skin, which is cool. You get like the, the Kree skin, which is a mid. You get the Pharah skin. Like, okay, so you get, you get some skins. They're, they're pretty, they're pretty tight skins, I'll admit. Except the Joker Queen one. That looks, that looks, that's pretty ass. The Mercy one's good. But I just, $26, bro. $26. You can get an oil change for $26, bro. It's you feel me? New skins either, Chase. The old skins cost. Yes. Yes. The old skins yes. Cost four or five years ago, when Overwatch first came out, they still have to pay twenty-five dollars. And it's each skin. It's each skin. I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to sell it in bundles. Like if you go to the shop, they have like the, like, the defenders of the castle bundle. Like bundle pack. I have. I have most of the stuff. I have the spray. I have the highlight intro, and I have the player icon for for ashes. Oh, I don't have the I don't have the highlight intro. My bad. But that's still. 2042 Overwatch coins, which is $20. Well, you know why they did this? Part of this was obviously money because they're going to make a buku amount of money on this shit. I hope they don't, but you know, people are stupid and they're going to buy this. But also, it's because how much heat they were getting for the loot box system. The loot box, you want to know why the loot box system worked for Overwatch? It was bad, but you don't know why it wasn't as bad. It's because, and, I'll get, and I'm, this is going to maybe transition to something else, because you could earn. You could earn the coins. You could earn the coins by playing the game. You if literally you could play 10, 20 matches. You earn enough points. You earn enough coins to spin a loot box. And cool, right? I either got it or I didn't. Most players, they're just getting the loot boxes passively when they play from day one. You cannot get the coins passively, bro. And, you, and when you do, it's terrible. I have like 400. I've been playing for like three weeks straight, bro. You, you feel what I'm saying? Passively by the challenges, the weekly challenges. But, but they suck! Of 60. You can get a max of 60 a week, Chase. At, at skins costing the way that they are, it would take seven months. Seven consistent months of you completing the weekly challenges week by week, getting those 60 in order to get one legendary skin. Just one. Let's say you just, this is your first time playing Overwatch and you want, you want the Reinhardt Draugr skin, which came from Halloween like three years ago. You have to play Overwatch for an entire seven months before you have enough to get it. And then that's not even saying that it'll be in the store at that time. You have to wait in order to buy the skin that you want after playing for most of a year in order to get it. That's that's terrible. Terrible. And here's and here, here's a, here's another big thing. So they just released the Halloween event, right? They just released the Halloween event. I'm sure it's fun. I played it one time. I think it's okay. What the fuck is the point of me playing this mode if I get no coins from playing it? The whole purpose of the event was okay. This is another fun way to get coins. It takes less. It, it, it takes a less amount of time. It's fun. It's goofy. Whatever. Right. I get nothing from playing this. I get absolutely nothing. There's no, there. there I, what is the incentive of me playing this? It's, it's just fun. I'm not getting a. I'm not getting a skin for it. Who cares about the challenges? Exactly. Who cares? You know what I mean? I don't even look at challenges. How do you even get to challenges, bro? How do I, where do we even get?
Go to find challenges. I don't even know. I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm sweating. I'm getting pissed. Okay. So. Main menu they have a challenge button, or you can press. I see it. And in the top right, the orange button. And I just get battle pass XP. I don't get coins from the battle pass. Why do I care? Why do I care? Yeah, I just. You know what's even worse? If you've already prestiged in the battle pass. Why the hell do I need more battle packs? Oh my god, bro, look at this. Complete four weekly challenges. 30 coins. Complete eight weekly challenges. You get 20 coins. You are getting... Th are you serious? 60. Bro. Max. Maximum. You can't get... You can't get these coins any other way besides playing money. They fucked up, bro. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. This, this is bad. bad. This is bad. bad. I, again, I implore you, if you are listening to this, I please, please, say something at these people on Twitter. Do not be disrespectful. Do not cuss anybody out. Do not harass anybody. Don't send death threats. None of that shit. But please, make your concern vocal. Please. And please, and say, and say it with your wallet, too. Don't buy this. If you want to buy the battle pass, sure, whatever. Right? That's 10 bucks flat. Easy. Why am I paying ten dollars for a battle pass when I get like six skins and I and you want me to pay twenty six dollars for one skin set? Are you serious? Like, bro, I'm yelling. I'm so upset. Like, I'm like, I'm pissed. Like, I just, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Please, do not, do not buy these skins. For all the new, the new people coming to Overwatch, I feel so bad for. They love this game. Bro, I saw an article. I, I literally saw an article. It said if you want every skin, it's going to cost you 10 grand. If you want every skin. Over the course of time, it's going to take you 10 grand. Bro. The skins, then. God. Highlighting shows. Imagine every other collectible for this game. Like, if somebody wanted to, like, in Overwatch, you know how much time I put in order to get every single thing I wanted for my favorite character, Reinhardt? I have every single thing I could have gotten for him. I felt so proud. It took me literally, like, years in order to get that. Somebody's, who, 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 like, a normal person like me, I would never, if I started just playing Overwatch this time, I would never be able to get all the skins because I'm not going to have enough money to buy all these skins. Who, who, who do they think I am? That's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm saying, dude. What? It's like that. They're think that amount of money into a game that is free. They, they, they. You know where they messed up? They did too much trying to copy Fortnite and Modern Warfare. They did too much because they saw how Call of Duty was monetizing just gun skins and all that, which people will pay for because they want that specific skin. They want that specific gun. That makes sense. But you were also able to earn them just by passively yes. playing and completing yes. the yes. in Call of Duty. In Fortnite, you're able to passively earn and collect all those coins. Yeah, it'll take a little bit of time, but not seven months of consistent play, Blizzard. Oh yeah, not also Oh yeah, also that uh that executioner skin for Junker Queen is nineteen hundred and it's yeah. it's like it's like in nineteen eighteen bucks. What the that's, fuck are they that's doing? Pretty man? much twenty dollars in the first place. For one to skin. Bro. Not even like holy like, like, shit. Man. Like, God, man, I don't get it. And you know what's the biggest spit in the face recently? So you remember when they were talking about, oh, hey, we feel bad for how the game launched. We feel bad because, you know, our, our servers uh, shat the bed on launch day. Because, you know, we got DDoS, but then we literally, just could, we literally just couldn't do anything for like a week straight. That Reaper skin that everybody got or whatever, that was supposed to be a monetized skin that was just to come out with everything they have right now. But they just gave it out for free. Like, that is the biggest p slap in the face. Can you imagine? imagine Do you imagine? I don't even play Reaper. That Bro, like, yes. I get this. Yes, and you gotta try. Give me some shitty, shitty charm. Imagine, like, going to, like, you imagine, like, you're at the school lunch, right? You're going, it's, it's lunchtime at school, right? And say you're like, a kid like so you're a kid and you spend you know five dollars uh, on your lunch for your parents money or whatever right and so everybody else everybody else they get the milk they get the side they get the the main meat whatever the fuck they're getting you get you get like half of that you get half of that you get half the experience you paid the same amount of money this game is free to play but stay with me you get half of that and then they give you the shit you were supposed to get originally and say, hey, here you go. We're doing you a favor. Ha ha. You're welcome. What? Like, I, I don't get it, bro. I don't, I don't get it. This is ridiculous, man. They need to bring back the loot. They need to bring back the loot boxes. And they're not going to because they they, they're, they're not going to because they're going to catch some more heat from the EU. They're, so they're not going to do it. I just, I, whatever, man. This is just stupid. So stupid. No, no, no. The EU would only give them flack if 
they made them not be able to get the loot boxes in a way like in game that's the only problem that they have like yeah they don't it's technically a gambling thing yes but there's other games that also have that that's not the issue it's more so like if they were to put it behind a paywall like you had to pay like like twenty dollars for a loot box and then that's gambling because you're gambling money at that point but if you just playing because it was so easy bro because you would just get a loot box every time you leveled up cool I, because i've been playing overwatch for so long i have most of the skins so most of everything i get is gonna be a duplicate that's more coins boom that's enough that's a that's a more towards another loot box you feel what i'm saying like it's just, it's stupid exactly. it's just, it's so stupid Hell, even if they bring the loot boxes back, but they're like every 10 levels or something, I'd be cool with that. I mean, yes. That, that, that yes. That's you to work and grind towards them. Yes. And I can, that allows you for, to have the battle pass still, which give and you could put like all the super cool mythic skins and maybe some of the legendaries in the battle pass. That makes sense. But then give the people who don't have the money to buy a battle pass every time or who don't have $20 to spend on one skin or one highlight intro or whatever the hell they want to charge the ability to earn it every five or ten levels bro they could do that and it'd be so easy it'd be so easy and yeah. it's not like they wouldn't buy the, the the loot boxes or battle pass or whatever because it's like we were still buying loot boxes in overwatch one i don't know what the issue was I don't they get were it. still earning money and if they say they it. weren't there damn lie they are a lie and a half because you get the YouTubers who buy like 200 loot boxes. Yes. Get, like one skin. Yes. You know, or like you get like it's. Oh man, bro. I just I don't get it, man. I don't know what I don't know what the hell they're doing. I don't know. I don't know. They smoking. They're smoking. What a what a dog shit company. <laughs> what, God, what is it? I hope I pray that if Xbox or Microsoft could buy them, they actually do something to make it. I thought they already, I thought they already bought them. Right. I thought they were about them. Nah, they're, they're getting held back by PlayStation or Sony or something because they think it'll, they'll be monopolizing. I, I don't know. They Who don't gives it? Who gives a shit? Honestly, man, I just... This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I just... I don't know, man. Overwatch Overwatch needs to just uh, complete... They... Here's the, and you know what burns me up inside is that fundamentally this is a good game. It plays well. You know what I mean? Server issues, yeah, you still have those. But like mechanic-wise... This game this is, is pretty a, good. Ever been. Exactly. It's as good as it's ever It's just been. these god awful ideas and business practices from Blizzard. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't. Now, you can't tell me that they do. And I feel bad for the devs because I know for a fact, I know for a fact, the devs want to do none of this shit. The devs, most of the devs are players themselves. They got to be like, bro, this, like, this is fucked up. It's the higher ups, it's the corporate people. It's the corporate folks that are making the devs do this shit. People gotta understand. Do not go out. But this is why I'm saying when people start sending death threats and shit. And don't get me wrong. Blizzard's a pretty shitty company. Like especially with like their sexual harassment with their female employees. Bro, do, but you you do not go over to these people. They're not the ones instilling these practices. It's the people above their heads that are making them do this. You know, you feel what I'm saying? As soon as Daddy Jeff Kaplan left, it went to hell. Oh, bro, that bro, man, look, this man, he jumped, he jumped ship. He said, "Oh, this bitch is sick, and I'm out of here. I'm out of here." He, he saw, he saw. As soon as Activision started putting their head, and I knew it. Activision, I, yo, Activision, it was a matter of time. I knew it from the jump. As soon as Activision acquired Blizzard, that they were gonna do something, and we knew it. We knew it because they've done it with every single game before then. They've always tried this sneaky stuff. But as soon as they they get Blizzard, then Jeff Kaplan leaves. And Jeff Kaplan, he he did his quarter or not what's it quarterly or monthly like like check-ins where he made those videos yeah. for Overwatch. Those were so good. Mm -hmm. Those were so good. You could tell that the that the company actually cared not only about the characters but about the people playing the game, and they actually wanted to make the game better. They would listen. But now it feels like they they they. Yeah, they made the game free, which made it more accessible to other people. But it's like, at what cost? Mm -hmm. at, at what cost? Now, no, most people are not gonna want to grind because they know that not in seven months, in most of a year, they're not gonna be able to get the skins that they want anyway. Yeah. Like, so what's the point? Uh. Like, and some of the better skins are seasoned or like event skins, so they're not just gonna be sold at any time. You're not gonna be able to buy um, the Zenyatta Cthulhu skin. You're not going to be able to buy that unless it's Halloween or unless it pops up in the shop. So it's just what you have to wait an extra amount of time after you have the coins. Nah, it's terrible right now. It's terrible. And it's so sad. Yeah.
It's, it's sad. And you know what's funny? If this game was just like complete ass, like this game was just like god awful, like terrible, like it just, it just played, like played like shit, looked like shit. No one would care about any of this. But because people love this game and passion, you people gotta understand the reason I'm getting upset is because I love this game. I said I, I say I hate this game. I say this game stresses me out. I love this game. I love enjoying this game. I, I, I love putting my time and effort into this game. I love getting better. I love getting those pl plays of the game, helping my team out, all that shit. I love that. I love that. I'm disappointed. A lot. This is not me being mad. This is me getting being disappointed because I know they can't do better. I, I I see the potential. I see the vision. You feel what I'm saying? Like I just, damn, bro. It's, it's like they're like capitalizing off of the entirety of all the fans that they had in the first game, bro. It's it's. We love this franchise. A lot of us made good memories with our friends and stuff. Of course, we're going to be investing in Overwatch 2 because we love not only the franchise and like the way this game plays. It's a great game, but it's half of the fun was getting the skins and stuff. Half of the fun was getting that grind so that we could get what we want. I mean, like, yeah, of course, like the game itself is amazing and it's fun, but it's like the practices is like what now? I'd much yeah. rather have paid another sixty dollars to buy this game than do all of this. I, I agree. I, I I wholeheartedly agree. I wholeheartedly agree. I agree. I don't know. I, I don't know. I hope Blizzard gets the message because there have been. I, I've been. I, I'm pretty active on Twitter, and I see a lot of people complain about this. There's a lot. There's some people that you know they're vocal about it. A lot. Of, a lot of big YouTubers too. A lot of big YouTubers. A lot of content creators. They're like, "Hey, man, this is this is ridiculous." You know what I mean? And that's my. And a lot of these people. Some of these people are affiliates. So some of these people, you know, even, I, I think Flats even says something about that. Uh, like, dude, like it's it's getting pretty bad. So it's, I, it's getting there. Yeah, I think it's getting there. And I've been seeing on Twitter people have been blowing it up. So, like, I know Blizzard is seeing this. And I know mm -hmm. I have a strong hope, a strong hope that it's not the devs for this game that is making this like this. I really do feel like it's the people above them. And I hope that they get their heads out of their ass before they lose not only the fan base that they already had for years and years and years, but they also lose the new players that are coming and just realize they can't earn anything. And, well, that's the thing, bro. And, that, and, that, and that's another thing. They gotta understand, Overwatch is a pretty good player base, but it's not like crazy, cra it's not like Apex. I, w I, would, I would put it more comparable to like Above Siege, cause Siege still has this like, it, it's been out with this like around the same amount of time. I think I think Overwatch come out a year later than Siege, I believe, but like, Overwatch's player base isn't like, <sighs> It's, it's big. It's big, don't get me wrong. But you're not getting the same amount of new players coming in. Most of the people excited for Overwatch 2 were players that previously played. I would say about 80%, 80, 80 to 75% of people that play Overwatch 2 transition from Overwatch 1. Do you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they got I they got they got to fix this shit, man. Because here's the thing. Unless I'm a new player and I see the amount of monetization coming at this shit. There's how scary that is. It's terrifying. 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 It's, it's annoying. Just the, just today, I convinced my pops, my old man, to play with me. He's been loving this game. He, plays, he asked me to play whatever like he's on. He's like, hey, let's play Overwatch. Let's play Overwatch. And I'm actually really thankful that they went with like the free, like like the the free route because it, it gave people the chance to actually come into Overwatch. People who didn't have the chance to like just drop sixty dollars on a new game when Overwatch first came out and then never eventually got into it. This gave a lot of people the chance to try it out, and you can see it. They love this game. It's everywhere. It's all over TikTok. It's all over YouTube. Everybody's playing this game. Right. But then they look at all the skins. They're like, "Wow, this is so good." This is so amazing. They see all the highlight intros and are like, wow, this character is so cool. This is actually awesome. And then they go to try to see how much like 1900 skit or Overwatch coins is worth. And they see $20 and realize they've been ripped off. Yeah. That hurts. Especially with inflation and everything coming around now too. Like people don't got money like that, dude. Like for real. Like, can you imagine, you know, being somebody that... You work, you know, you you work a not even a nine to five, but you work some pretty long hours. You feel what I'm saying? You got to sustain a house over your head. You got kids and all this shit. You just want to play a game after work. You have a good time. You want to have fun, right? You see a skin that you like, twenty dollars, twenty dollars, bro. You can't even you can't even put the hours in to get it. You gotta just fork it up. 
and they they're not even slick with it either yeah no like the old no ones are 1900 while the new skins are 2200 like same damn thing you also what the hell what the hell is this 29 percent what the hell is this 30 percent off what the fuck is this I have I don't know what they're basing that off of, by the way. Exactly. What, what is this? You can oh, yeah. Defenders of the Castle. Defenders of the Castle. You got the four skins and... Oh, it's just the skins. You don't get anything else. You got the four skins? Go to the Witch Kiriko bundle. I got something to show you. Because they put a disclaimer down in the bottom right. What's up? It says... Bundled price comparison based on acquiring each item separately. For any item not regularly offered individually, comparison is based on price for similar I uh, for similar items offered individually in the same tier and category. So they're getting their price based off of how much the weapon charms usually cost, how much the highlight entries usually cost, player icons. They're taking the general price for how much they usually are comparable to like the like the level that they are, whether they're rare, legendary, whatever. And they're totaling it up, and that's where they get that 3700. And they're saying they're making it 2600, which is 29% off when it usually would be 3700 because of what? I don't know why they even thought anybody would want to pay money for a weapon charm. I don't know why they thought anybody would genuinely pay money for a name card. It's. It, it makes no sense. It makes that, no sense. That Defenders of the Castle bundle is almost $40. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's just Jesus Christ. Seventy six hundred is ridiculous. I, that is I, I ridiculous. Don't I don't know. I don't know. Oh wait, no, that's more than forty dollars. It's like yeah, it's like forty five or some shit. No, it's may, way more than that. Well, a thousand on one hundred, it's eighty five percent off. So yeah, it's not to be. A, is that around, Is that fifty? Oh. Yeah. No shit. The no way. The 700 bundle is fifty dollars, and that only gives you. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. You would need to buy the fifty dollar bundle and then the twenty dollar bundle in order to have enough to get that. Holy shit. This is this is that ridiculous. Is, that is seventy dollars. I'm not gonna make this video too long because we're already at an hour, but I'm just gonna wrap it up because this is. This is ridiculous. I really hope Blizzard decides to get their act together. I really hope that Blizzard decides to turn around and change. I hope corporate decides to be like, hey, you know what? This isn't worth it. Can we, we need to keep our player base? Because um, people are going to put the hours in this game, but just the money is going to stop coming in pretty quick. Besides the battle pass, and it's just they got they got they got to realize that something's got to change. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Just yeah. Anyway, dollars. Anyway, you got any, you got any closing statements, sir? Nah, honestly, I'm just, I'm just sad looking at all these prices, man. Dude. Let's close this shit out. Yeah, I'm just, I, this is making me sad, but you know what, man? I just, I, again, hopefully Blizzard can turn it around. Hopefully Blizzard can, you know, uh, turn around for the better. But anyway, man, uh, that's, that's about all I have for you guys today, man. I just, this, this shit makes me sad. So it's me, boy, Daffy, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe, all that good stuff that you don't care about. Um, yeah, uh, I will see you guys in the next video, man. Peace. Oh, nice. my God.